What is happening all you mentees? This is the Uncanny Omar from Near Mint Condition and join me today as I continue my comprehensive reading order of Batman and Collected Edition. This is part three of four, so please stay tuned. And welcome back everybody. Now before I get started, a huge thank you to our patrons for voting for Batman. It was either Batman versus Superman and they voted for Batman. So if you want to get in on the voting, uh, check out our Patreon. All of that information is in the description down below. It's a great way to support the channel if you can do so. And thank you to our existing patrons. You all make videos like this possible. So today we are focusing everything from one year later all the way up until Flashpoint. Again, I am mainly focusing on Batman and Detective Comics. However, something happens when a certain Grant Morrison takes over the run, that Detective Comics kind of becomes a comic book for other characters. So there's two other titles that are introduced that I have to talk about. So those are going to be in here. And of course, I'll let you know when to read these crossovers that have happened, like I always do, I like to sneak books in. So let's go ahead and get started because we got a lot to talk about, even though it doesn't look like it's that much. So kicking off this part three of four is Batman face to face. The events in this book happen right after one year later. So really, if you're looking at it when the books were published, this literally happens right after Batman City of Crime and Under the Hood, or the Red Hood as the big thick collection is called. So this event here happens after all of 52, like I asked you all to read, and Infinite Crisis. So there's a new Batman in Gotham City. I'm not going to reveal who that is, but it's a lot of fun. This one's written by James Robinson, who you all know I love from Starman. He also had a really good run of JSA. He did some Fantastic Four. Um, but this is face-to-face. -face. There's a new Batman. Someone is going around killing all these, well, let's just call them D-list villains. Sadly, that's what they are, but in Gotham, and there is a new Batman that could be a new Robin, maybe, but it all comes to play here. This collects both Detective Comics and Batman. One of the things I'm going to say right now, though, is a lot of people have asked me, like, where is the Matt Wagner collection? Where are you, where'd you put that? Well, I didn't want to go outside of Batman and Detective, but if I were to include that, the Mad Monk and all those storylines, those take place after year one, much like I said, the... Neil Adams Omnibus. So let's move on with Batman Detective by Paul Dini. Now this and the other collection have been uh, reprinted in a thicker trade as well as I think as a deluxe edition. And of course we have the Omnibus coming out. However, the Omnibus does not contain anything that was not written by Paul Dini. So that kind of sucks because there are some stories in here that were written by Stuart Moore and Royale McGraw. I don't know. I don't work in the DC Collected Editions department. But this is Paul Dini. This is the guy from Batman the Animated Series. He also did uh, the stories of World's Greatest. So he's worked in comics before. By the way, the person that is drawing this is J.H. Williams. One of my favorite comic book artists of all time. Mainly because he can mimic anybody's style. We also have Don Kramer drawing most of this stuff here. Uh, Joe Benet Benetis. Benitez. And this one really focuses on the villains. Like each issue is a different villain, like Poison Ivy, Dr. Phosphorus, the Riddler. And that's what kicks this off in there's the Penguin, which leads us to the next Paul Dini book. And this is Death and the City. So this is a team up between Batman and Satana. And they're trying to solve a case that brings about uh, deadly encounters with an unexpected foe. And I'll leave it at that. And pretty much it goes back and forth in between this present time and the past life of Bruce Wayne. I love that it is Paul Dini, you know, the guy that wrote the animated series that has a deep understanding of who Bruce Wayne and Batman are supposed to be. And it's phenomenal. Um, when I flip through these pages, by the way, Robin has a new costume, but it is still Tim Drake. Um, maybe here let's look on the next book batman by grant morrison omnibus volume one available in trade paperbacks as well which might be easier to collect when i talk about the reading order here but what i was saying about tim drake he's still robin even though he has a new robin costume he's still appearing in the pages of teen titans every dc title by the way every dc title has 
gone one year later. So it's not just Batman. It's not Nightwing. Nightwing has a new costume as well. Uh, there's a new Batgirl, but we'll reveal who that is later. So this book kicks off with just little pages from 52, the different weeks, talking about where Bruce has been for the last year, if he hasn't been in Gotham. And then we get Grant Morrison kicking off his run with Batman and Son. This stellar story arc where we are introduced to a new character in the Batman family. And that is, of course, well, hell. Okay, so spoilers, but just in case you don't want to hear who this new character is. But I think it's important to talk about. It is Damien. It is Batman's son. Him and Talia al Ghul, the daughter of Raj al Ghul, have a son. And this is the story arc where he meets his father for the first time right here. Now, what I suggest doing with this particular omnibus is reading it all the way up until issue 658. I would stop reading it there because we have a crossover that's happening after this. And this crossover does have a spoiler on the title, so if you don't want to know what it is, skip on over to the Batman Private Casebook. But let's go ahead and talk about it, and we'll come back to this. Grant Morrison and Paul Dini's The Resurrection of Raj al Ghul, my favorite villain. Remember when I said that Death and the Maiden was going to be important um, to read? Well, that's why, because something happens to Raj in there. Well, I mean, okay, he dies. There, that's the big spoiler. Resurrection, this is a multi-part crossover, and it's pretty interesting. I'll show you what they did in the omnibus. So this is going through Detective Comics, it's going through pages of Batman, and it's going through pages of Robin and Nightwing. So all titles, and then it's got uh, parts of the annual in here. And it's pretty much how Raj is trying to come back, and he's using Damien, this new character, this new character that's trying to be Robin. Well, let's just leave it at he's trying to use him. So this is the one that you want there's i think a deluxe edition that came out there's a trade paperback edition this is the standard size hardcover now you can go back to batman by graham morrison if you're enjoying that but my suggestion is to do something else first let's go to this let's go to the paul dini private case book these are five individual stories collected in here and they have one does not have anything to do with the other but some of these do collect part of the <laughs> resurrection of raja ghul and most of this is drawn by Dustin Wynn. Paul Dini's still writing it. There's uh, some team-ups from the past in here. Uh, some team-ups from the present time. There's a story of how Batman gets that armor that's found in the pages of the Resurrection of Raja Ghul crossover. Look at Dustin Wynn's artwork. Now, Paul Dini apparently really liked working with Dustin Wynn so much. And I believe that is how you say his name, by the way. This gentleman's name that's i had a friend that that was his last name and that's how he would pronounce it he, but he liked working with him so much that they started a new series and i'll talk about that and again i mentioned that paul dini is getting an omnibus originally it was supposed to be a hush omnibus but hey yeah whatever dc so this is the return of hush i've talked about that villain a little bit um and you can probably tell that i really enjoyed him i thought he was a cool villain especially especially when Paul Dini took over the book. So Hush returns and he begins striking Batman how whatever means necessary. And he ends up attacking Catwoman and man this is dark but I don't care. This this is this is the pitch. He removes her heart from her chest. Man that that storyline featuring Hush this is the best storyline featuring Hush. That is freaking dark. So this is what I suggest reading next. Again Dustin Wynn is joining Paul Dini on this run and now we can go back to this omnibus right here and now it is Antonio S. Daniel who is joining Grant Morrison to finish out Batman um, this era this first arc of Batman and I the only thing that's missing from this omnibus are the issues of John Ostrander's uh, grotesque storyline. Those have never been collected. And honestly, what's interesting is going and doing these videos, there are two freaking books I'm missing. So thank goodness I did this. I, I have no idea why. There were uh, two of them. They're the David Hine books, but I'll talk a little bit about those here in a second. We're introduced to the character of Jezebel, who's a new love interest for Bruce Wayne. Is she good? Is she evil? Well, one way to find out. 
The end of this story arc, I'm sure most of you know, but just in case, spoilers again. The end of this storyline is called Batman R.I.P. Does it stand for rest in peace or does it stand for something else? Well, you can find that out for yourself. I, I think it's a unique take on Batman and it's one of my top five favorite runs. But it is a little dense and there, there are some really deep thinking parts in here. So what is real, what isn't. By the way, this is really cool what they did. Damn it, and as I'm flipping through here trying to find what they did, I'm reminded of the clown at midnight. My wife and I love this story and I understand there's a lot of people that don't. Because this is just one issue, but it reads like a novel, right? And I can understand people that are like, hey, I paid money for a comic book. What the hell is this? To me, this is one of the best Joker stories I freaking, I can't, I, I don't know why people don't like this. Uh, maybe because they don't like reading novels, perhaps. I don't know. But if you've not read this, this is one of the best Joker or Grant Morrison Joker stories, really. Now, what I was trying to show you all, damn it, and then there's this future storyline here. Grant Morrison did so much, but I was just trying to show you all pages from the crossover event. So here we have the resurrection of Raja Ghul. So what they did, instead of putting the Detective Comics, Robin, and Nightwing in here, is add a page of just a summary of what happened after the events of the issue of Batman that Grant Morrison wrote. So Batman, RIP, leads directly into a crossover event that you may or may not want to read. It's up to you. I, it, I strongly suggest reading it. And of course, I'm talking about Final Crisis. Something huge happens in this event, uh, especially to the character. Not so much Batman, but Bruce Wayne. So I think it's important to read. This does a little double dipping with the issues of Batman, RIP. For me, I'm strongly suggesting reading Final Crisis before you go any further. Now, before I talk about this next title, before I flip it over and show you what it is, um, and before I go any further with this video, I do want to say there's going to be a big spoiler here because I can't continue doing this video series without talking about something big that happens because either the freaking titles are going to give it away or just I have to talk about the importance of a character and his role now after something happens in Final Crisis. So just in case, spoilers, okay? You don't have to finish the video series, I still love you all, but just in case, spoilers. Okay, Batman, whatever happened to the Cape Crusader? One of the best books ever written. Uh, this is getting a deluxe edition treatment, and I can't wait for you all to read it if you've not read it. This is Neil Gaiman, it's just two issues, but then there's a couple of little extras in the back. But this is in the aftermath of Bruce Wayne dying in Final Crisis, right? This is a throwback to the classic Whatever Happened of, to the Man of Tomorrow by Alan Moore. Right after Crisis on Infinite Earths, we say goodbye to our classic Superman before John Byrne takes over the books. So this is kind of like a goodbye to Bruce Wayne, who was Batman. So who gets to be Batman if Bruce Wayne is gone? Come on, it can't be that easy. Battle for the cow. Really? Do we really need to fight for the cow? I mean, everybody and their mother that had ever read comic books knew who the right person would be to take over the book. And I realize this is a mini series, but I think it's important to read uh, because it shows you, for the first time, this is Antonio S. Daniel taking over as a writer and artist. So there's also a little companion that goes with it, and I don't want to say little, but this has all the one-shots included in here. Not essential, but I think if you're a completist, much like me, you definitely want to read this. So where do we go from here? Who is the new Batman? Again, spoilers, just in case. At this moment, I just want to remind you all to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And check out our Patreon. We have different tier levels for all our members. And by the way, a huge shout out to Sonny Howie for sending me a list of the Batman books. So here we go. We have a new person under the cow, Batman Reborn. Uh, Robin went through it and so did Batgirl. Everything is going through the Batman Reborn label. So who is under the cow? The only person, the only damn person that could take over Bruce Wayne if he died, Dick Grayson. Dick Grayson becomes the new Batman. And his Robin, oh, and this is so fun, his Robin is going to be Damien, so Bruce Wayne's son. Uh, Robin, Tim Drake, 
has now gone on. And when I do a Robin reading order, I'll talk about it. But he now becomes Red Robin. He's still part of the Teen Titans. But this is Judd Winnick, Mark Bagley. Just kind of an in-between. But I love this. I love, love this uh, trade paperback. Nobody talks about it. But I think it's important. I mean, this is where it all kind of begins. Leading us to the streets of Gotham. So, Hush is back, right? But... This book features Dick Grayson as Batman since Bruce is gone. And this acts like this is a direct sequel to Heart of Hush. And like I mentioned, that's why I included this in this reading order. By now, Detective Comics has kind of become more of a focus on Batwoman. Cannot wait for that omnibus. It's just been moved. It has not been canceled. But Dustin Wynn still drawing this title. Unfortunately, some of this will not be collected in the omnibus, sadly, because some of this is not written by Paul Dini. It doesn't make any sense, so I have to hold on to my hardcovers. And this is <laughs> this is a really dark storyline because Hush has altered his appearance, and he's messing with Dick Grayson. He's messing with the new Batman. And, man, this book, I can't wait for that omnibus, but then again, it's not going to be super complete. Okay, so let's go here. Let's go to Batman Grant Morrison Omnibus Volume 2. This is what introduces us to the new dynamic duo. I love when Grant Morrison decided to stay on Batman, it was because he got a chance to write Dick Grayson as Batman. You know, Bruce Wayne is gone during this time. And he gets to team him up with Bruce Wayne, his the character that he helped co-create, and that is Damian Wayne. And Damien is even fi finding his own identity through these pages. Uh, so this collects, you know, the first 16 issues of Batman and Robin. Um, and then it has issues 700 and 7 to 702. But it doesn't collect all of 700, which is really odd, which is why I kept another one of the books here that I'll show in a little bit. And then, of course, there's a mini series that it collects here. Uh, but before we talk about that mini series, Let's look at the next books. Because you definitely want to read all of Batman and Robin and then issue 700. The way that this is mapped in here is pretty good. You don't have to keep going back and forth if you just want to stick to just reading Batman by Morrison, by the way. Or if you want to do it the really easy way is just read them in little standard size hardcovers or trade paperbacks. I think there is an absolute of this as well. So the next book I have is Streets of Gotham, Leviathan. The one thing about this, and again, why I'm keeping my hardcovers, is that Leviathan is a storyline that's written by Chris Yost. And this is not going to be included in the Paul Dini Omnibus. I'll talk about what's included when I look at the last Streets of Gotham. And again, the reason I added Streets of Gotham and Batman and Robin was because Detective Comics kind of became a uh, Batwoman and a question uh, storyline. However, there is some Batman when he comes back, and damn it, <laughs> I... The reason I do these reading orders sometimes is to make sure I have the books themselves. And um, there's two that I'm missing, so I'll talk a little bit about those here in a second. Next up is Batman Life After Death. Tony S. Daniel, or Antonio S. Daniel. Well, like my boy Steve always calls me out when I call him Tony Daniels. Don't know why I do that. Uncanny Omar talk pretty one day, or Uncanny Omar sometimes says things on purpose because he loves dangling fruit. No one will ever know. So, this continues... Uh, Tony S. Daniels run on Batman and he is now not only writing but drawing the book he's introducing us new characters and honestly this serves as a direct sequel to the Battle of the Cow storyline and in that storyline we were introduced to a new Black Mask um, who had been fighting and pitting up against Two-Face and the Penguin to take control of Gotham's underworld. So this is another one of Dick Grayson and Damian Wayne teaming up against time to take down the new Black Mask before, of course, Gotham is consumed by his chaos. And at this moment, you all know I love sneaking books in. I am sneaking in Blackest Night. And the reason why is because there's a Batman Blackest Night, and even the way Blackest Night kicks off, it is freaking dark, and it involves Bruce Wayne, and... It involves a grave, so if you've not read it, do yourself a favor. It, it, it's, a stand, it's a good standalone story anyway, but this is where I recommend reading it. Batman Streets of Gotham, House of Hush. This is the finale that wraps up Paul Dini's run on Batman. Now, there is an omnibus coming out that I mentioned before. 
uh, that omnibus collects Batman 685, Batman Annual number one, Batman Black and White number three, Batman Gotham Knights 14, Streets of Gotham 1 through 4, 7, 10 through 14, 16 through 21, the DC Holiday Special number one, Detective Comics 821 to 824, 826 and 827 and 828. 831, 833, and 834, 837 to 841, and 843 to 850, and parts of 852 and 1000. So, as you can tell, it skips a lot of the Chris Yo stuff, the David Hines stuff, the earlier stuff that he was uh, co writing with Stuart Moore. So, that's why I'm keeping these. Now, this is an interesting collection. This is Batman Time and the Batman. And it's an interesting collection because. Because this is a gap between Batman, R.I.P., and the next miniseries that I'll talk about. That I can't spoil without saying spoilers first. But what I want to say is that... Now, there is another trade paperback called Batman Imposters, but I'm not including it in this reading order because that ties into the video game, even though it literally is issues of Detective Comics. But this is Batman The Time time and the batman some of this was already collected in that second omnibus however 703 and all of 700 were not collected in there so i did want to make mention of that batman black mirror that's right we are still not going back to volume two of batman by grant morrison omnibus yet but here we have to talk about this phenomenal storyline that kicked off scott snyder's run in dc and batman so this is Black Mirror, not to be confused with the British TV show, which is great. But this is Scott Snyder writing Batman for the first time, not even Bruce Wayne, because it is still Dick Grayson. And this predates all the stuff that he did in the New 52. Like, this is not part of an omnibus. I believe there is an absolute of Black Mirror. There was a deluxe edition. There are trade paperbacks available. But this collects all of Black Mirror. Uh, he has teamed up with Jock, the artist. And... It's just, it's really cool because it makes you appreciate Dick Grayson for who he is. He's one of the best characters at DC, whether he's Batman or not. But this book makes you appreciate him even more. And what he is like without Bruce Wayne in his life. Batman, Eye of the Beholder. Tony Daniels' last book before The New 52. And it's funny because in The New 52, he goes from Batman to Detective Comics and Scott Knighter goes from Detective Comics to Batman. But this is the last book. This is the storyline that finishes off, I would say, Dick Grayson as Batman for a little bit. Because I am going to talk about another book. I'm just going to sneak it in right now uh, when I'm done with this one. There is another trade paperback that I recommend reading. It's a crossover and it's called Gotham Shall Be Judged. And that one crosses over with Gotham City Sirens and Azrael and Red Robin. So there is a new Azrael during this time. It's not John Paul Valley, but I, think, I don't know. I, I didn't think mentioning that was important, but if I don't mention it, I know some people will call me out. But this finishes out Tony Daniel writing Dick Grayson. And now we are jumping back to this. It's just why it takes a long time because we jump back and forth. In a perfect world, all of this would be released in chronological order instead of just creators. But we have mini series in between. So the next book I'm going to talk about is a spoiler. So stop watching now in case you care about what happens. Collected in a deluxe edition and trade paperback and a standard hardcover is The Return of Bruce Wayne. And all six issues are collected in this omnibus here. So it talks about how Bruce Wayne comes back, how he escaped the clutches of death. I didn't even talk about how he died, but how he returns to us, to, to our world, to be reunited with his Bat family, and then what he decides to do with his Bat family. And I am going to talk about that. So I lied for all those that have been paying attention. I said this would not be part of my reading order, but I have to put it in here. It is... Batman by Grant Morrison, Volume 3. I'll focus more on this in Part 4 of this. But this is pre-New 52, so I have to talk about it. So all the stories, all eight issues, these right here, found in that trade paperback, are read before Flashpoint and New 52. So that's one thing to keep in mind. He's teamed up with Yannick Paquette and Chris Burnham, and together... Batman family has just now gotten bigger and they are all over the world 
So there's a Batman or a Batman family member somewhere around the world at all times fighting crime. It sounds like a goofy song, but I swear it's not. And honestly, you could read this whole thing if you wanted to, but I suggest stopping at issue 8. Uh, just because something happens in between issue 8 and the new 52. Even though Morrison really didn't care. He was just writing his own continuity. He was like, whatever, new 52, don't care. And Bruce Wayne is now back under that cow, by the way. Um, Bruce Wayne and uh, Dick Grayson got to stick around for a while as Batman too. Let's go back to this shot. It's not just Bruce Wayne, but then there you have the new Batgirl. Damien as Robin. Dick Grayson as Batman still, and then Red Robin right here. Of course, Alfred's still around, and Oracle as the new Azrael. And all of that is about to end with Flashpoint. Flashpoint gives us another reboot. Uh, this is, Batman's always been affected like a soft reboot is what it's called. Like his history isn't really messed around with. It's more of his side characters. For example, after this, uh, Oracle will no longer be around. Barbara Gordon will no longer be Oracle. So to find out what happens next, tune in to part four. Now, you can purchase most of these books from our sponsor, CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off the cover price. Cheap Graphic Novels prides itself on packaging your books so they arrive safely and in excellent condition, as well as prompt and helpful service. And check out their bargain bin for even greater deals up to 90% off cover price. And for you minties, Cheap Graphic Novels is renting a special promotion. If you're a first time customer, let them know you were referred by Near Mint Condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. Now this is only for US customers. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with the kind of deep discounts, quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that was part three. Please let me know in the comments down below what you would have put in, what you would have taken out, what you would have included as a crucial part of reading Batman and Detective Comics. Again, just keeping it to Batman and the Detective. Even though Streets of Gotham took over Detective Comics and of course Batman and Robin kind of became that third important title because it was the Morrison title. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, again, check out our Patreon. It's a great way to support the channel if you can do so and thank you to our existing patrons for making videos like this possible more importantly please everybody stay healthy stay safe and much love to all of you